Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to The Law. This is your help law. It is your legal light. And you know what we have been doing all this year so far has been to take your questions and bring the right experts, particularly the lawyers, in to give you the education that is required. Today, we'll do one another such, but very special. And you have the opportunity to call in and to ask any question on your mind regarding SNET or pensions. We'll be right back. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. Welcome back. It's going to be a very interesting, empowering, educative session. And today we call it Time with SNETs. Time with SNETs. That is the Social Security and National Insurance Trust. And here in the studio, we are very fortunate to have Emmanuel Saki, who is Legal Services Manager of the Trust and Charles Akwe Gashon, who is the Acting Public Affairs Manager of the Trust. Gentlemen, good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Thanks for having us. Great. So we will move straight away to our The Law 101. What is up today? Nine, retiring age and pension. Clause 1. A public officer shall accept, as otherwise provided in the Constitution, retire from public service on attaining the age of 60 years. Clause 2. A public officer may, except as otherwise provided in the Constitution, retire from public service at any time after attaining the age of 45 years. Clause 3. The pension payable to any person shall be exempt from tax. Clause 4. Notwithstanding Clause 1 of this article, a public officer who has retired from the public service after attaining the age of 60 years may, where the exigencies of the service require, be engaged for a limited period of not more than two years at a time, but not exceeding five years in all, and upon such other terms and conditions as the appointing authority shall determine. So today, the Law 101 is on Article 199. Remember, if by the end of this show you have learnt nothing, it should not escape you. Law 101 should not escape you. And as we always do, <clears throat> our guests will have two minutes each to give us brief commentary about this particular provision, Article 199. What's the sense you make of it? Any one of you can start. <laughs> well, I'll start. Right. Now, the retiring age provided in the Constitution at um, 45 refers to those enjoying cap 30 benefits. Those of us who belong to the SNIT scheme, the minimum age at which you can retire is 55 years, and the maximum 60, which is the mandatory age at which a person may retire compulsorily. Now, age 45 refers to voluntary retiring age for members of cap 30, which was 
a pension scheme operated prior to the inception of SNITs in 1965. So this captivity predates SNITs. In other words, it was a pension scheme operated by our colonial masters for civil servants then. Okay. And it has continued to date. Thank you. Right. <laughs> um, good afternoon to all our viewers. Um, with, with the retirement age that we have there, I tell people that we should be hoping to turn 60 and go on retirement. But some say to surprise you to know that people don't want to even retire at 60. <laughs> some are 60 and they realize that probably they had a promotion just a year ago. They want to enjoy that salary for a much longer period. <laughs> so they will come to us that the date of bed I provided to you some 35 years ago is wrong. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> reduce my age by, say, three years. But they will not actually tell you that the, their date of bed was mm. wrong. They will tell you SNET captured their date of bed wrongly. wrongly. So that has to be changed. Um, but I'll say that whatever age you provided at the beginning is what is going to be used. Okay. And uh, people should also know that your employer will not prevent you from retiring at 60. If you want to stay beyond that, that is your choice. If with the two years that the constitution provides, it is not compulsory on you. Mm. So once you are 60... There's a possibility of two, two years plus one. Plus one. A total of five years, five years. addition. Exactly. But that's actually for people who have special, specialized expertise Very that well. the entity cannot easily find. Find. Okay. So, so even if you find yourself in that situation, it will be based on negotiation. Okay. Uh, the employer will not or cannot compel you to stay beyond. Right. So once you turn to that age and you are still in service, it means you are likely to be contributing, so, though you are more than 60. Mm -hmm. And even when you retire at 60, the constitution says you, are, you have the right to enjoy pension. That's right. But with that, you will need to apply. Mm. Pension will not come to you automatically, even though you contributed. Okay. Because SNED cannot say, yeah, 60, so come for your money. All right. You may decide that I have enough plans, so let me go for my money at age 67. Okay. That is purely your choice. Thank you, Charles. And um, so basically, Article 199, what you have to take away is that the Constitution provides for a retiring age compulsory, generally compulsory, yes, at sir. 60. When you turn 60, it's your compulsory retiring age. That's, I say general because there are people who have an exception, like judges of the Superior Court in the Supreme Court. They retire beyond 60, uh, 70 years or so. Now, you will see that often for those in academia, particularly in the higher tertiary educations, education system, like lecturers, they would have retired and then they will be engaged again. They will do about two years. Then they may do a, an extra two years and do maybe one more year. So the constitution allows that after you have done 60, if you have some specialized expertise for which your, the entity where you work uh, needs and can't immediately find a replacement, they can keep you on, on a contract. But for two years at a time and an extra two years, and finally, perhaps, maybe one more year. So that will bring you to 65 years. But there is a voluntary retiring age, which the Constitution pegs at 45. You can decide that you want to retire at that age. Um, have I done well? Yes, you <laughs> have. Thank you. All right, so that's a summary that you don't have to forget. Thank you very much. This is the law. It is your legal light. It is your help law. And my guests are Emmanuel Saki, who is Legal Services Manager of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust. And Charles Akwegeshon is the AG or the Acting Public Affairs Manager of the Trust. Now, let's go to our case for today. All right, okay, so... Uh, they don't want you to forget. My production don't want you to forget the, <laughs> the issues that we have uh, looked at. 
thank you very much. Now, um, we begin on this note. There is someone who sends us a message and he was asking questions that have to do with pensions. But before we bring his uh, issue on to you, let's first ask, basically, what is SNIT supposed to be? Somebody asked us last week to tell them what SNIT is. What would you say if that question were posed to you? I don't know if uh, Mr. Saki will start. Yes, or... I will. SNIT is a statutory body set up by the government to manage the basic mandatory social security scheme under the three-tier pension scheme currently operated in this country. Okay. Now, the three-tier consists of the first year, which is basic national social security. It is mandatory, and every worker is supposed to contribute five and a half percent and the employer will add 13 percent and at the end of his working life benefits will be paid to such a person by way of pension now in case you become invalid you'll be paid invalidity pension and should you die before age 60 your dependents will be paid the benefits due you mm -hmm. then we have the second tier which is also mandatory but it is fully funded occupational pension scheme and that is um, operated in conjunction with employers the benefit of which is payable at the end of your working life by way of lump sum the third year is also uh, a voluntary scheme but that is um, also fully funded provident and personal pension scheme the benefit is also paid in the form of lump sum when you attain age 55 to 60, or you die in service, or you become invalid, as the case may be. So in all the three cases, the benefits are payable when you meet the qualifying conditions. Mm. And that is what I stated. Um, you, you gave uh, about three different levels of, uh, is it the contributions? If you may briefly explain that before we go on. Now, under the law, that is um, um, Act 766, as amended by 883, every worker in this country is supposed to contribute 5.5% of his income to SNIT. Okay. Now, the employer will add 13%, making a total of 18.5%. Now, out of this 18.5%, 5% will be sent to the second tier fund managers to manage. And these fund managers are um, regulated by NPRA. So they are not just doing anything on their own, including SNIT. We are all regulated. NPRA is a national, national, national pension regulatory, regulatory authority. authority, yes. So 5% goes there. 2.5% is transferred to NHIS by SNIT. And SNIT is left with 11.5% to manage and pay pension at the end of your working life. Okay. Um, you have been in the news in the course of this week for all the good reasons, <laughs> except those who don't want to comply with the law. So uh, maybe Charles would like to give us an idea. So it was all over in the news. SNCC takes legal action against 7,951 employers. I'm like, that's too much a number. What's going on? Countrywide. Yes. Uh, um, I will say the, you know, when it comes to payment of contributions for workers, because employers have a portion to pay, they pay 13%. Yes, he just mentioned that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the workers' contribution, 5.5. So the 13.5, the, to, uh, the total 18.5, out of which 13.5 comes to SNET. That 13.5% that has to come to SNET. Sorry, are you familiar with his, his act? Very well. Have you seen what he has done to it? In fact, we are. We should call Dampari. <laughs> we should call Dampari after you. <laughs> Look, he, he's, he's, he's fought the, the law. <laughs> oh, no, that's my working tool. He's, it's, my he's working, marked, it's my working tool. Former, former, former prosecution's manager. Yeah. He's marked every portion of it, and he's, he seems to have written his own 
uh, <laughs> amendments. No, I've been using the since <laughs> I get that. I get that. I get that. The, All right, but uh, <laughs> let's have a hard cover for you. Let's have a hard cover. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so employees have um, a great so period of. To, it doesn't look nice. Though. Why are you guys? Get the hard cover. You are, you are destroying the, the paper book. We, we, right. we have 14 days. Employees have 14 days grace period into the ensuing month right. to pay up the 30.5%. Right. However, some of these employees hold on to the contributions. We have instances where three months, five months, employees haven't paid. So when it happens that we will try to engage them. And when that fails, in fact, employees have the right to come and negotiate terms, mutually beneficial terms of settlement. Okay. So all those options are made available to them. But when they fail to do that, because SNET is under obligation to pay benefit to the workers who have registered, mm. we are left with no other option than to take legal action. In okay. fact, it is not a preferred mode we, we want to use. All right. But under the circumstances, if we don't collect the money, it will be difficult for us to pay benefit to workers when they retire. Right. The numbers that you saw, um, I'll tell you the number of people who are defaulted, they are in several thousands. Okay. But it, you can't take all of them to court at the same time. The court will be overwhelmed with some That's of these. Yeah. So gradually we try to use this softer approach mm. to get them to comply. <laughs> so we are going to have an exercise, I think in the next two months or so, we have a mass prosecution exercise, and all employers who within the next two months don't take advantage of the period to come and negotiate or to pay up, we will have to institute legal action against them. But those who default, they have 3% penalty to pay. Okay. But we, we even want to call it um, interest, because it's really not penalty. Mm. We need to collect the money, invest to be able to pay people when they retire. All right. But they are denying the trust of investment returns. Mm. So that 3% is to cushion us to be able to pay members when they retire. Okay. So um, the numbers, yes, people say, oh, SNED is being too hard. But if you don't take that action, it means we cannot pay you right. your benefit when you retire. Great. Well, let me add mm. that employers have the option to negotiate when they fall into arrest or find themselves in some difficulty. Because you don't take pleasure in prosecuting. No, that is the last resort. So anytime you are unable to pay for some obvious reason, come to the branch office where you usually make payment. Mm -hmm. Speak to the manager and tell him or her that you want to enter into negotiation and pay by installment. It's acceptable. Okay. It is when you don't come and then the arrears keep piling. We won't wait till six months before we come after you. Right. After one to third month, enemy action. Okay. We'll have to retrieve them. Your money. action is to protect the employee's interest. That is so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, before we came into the studio, we were having a very interesting discussion. And uh, that is where we'll get to before I share uh, the message that was sent to us by one of our uh, viewers or being Dakon about uh, his net contributions. Who is qualified to make a contribution? Let me leave it there. Who is qualified okay. to make a contribution? Um, well, yeah. wherever there is employer employee relationship, social security contribution must be paid. And so if you have an employer who has employed you for pay, then at the end of every month, social security must be paid. If for some reason you leave formal employment and you start your own business, you have the option to continue contribution as a voluntary contributor. Okay. So the law gives that option to self-employed people. Every category of employee that is, so. is to register with SNETs and to have contributions paid on yes. their behalf and their own as well. Yes, they must have a social security number into which contribution will be paid by the employer. And we keep record of all these contributions for it, your future It doesn't benefits. matter the type of work I'm doing. Okay, so the, the, the scheme is open to all workers. Mm. Uh, the, the law is clear on that. 
it applies to employees and the self-employed. So you probably might be um, a consultant in the corner somewhere, uh, you are a legal practitioner, you are into private practice, right. or you, you are an architect, you are an Uber driver or coconut seller. You have the right to join the scheme and enjoy the benefits of the scheme as any other worker. worker. So the one who sells as Mokola mm -hmm. can simply walk into the SNIT uh, office and say, I want to register because I see myself becoming old someday. I cannot continue doing the work I am doing. Or I foresee that anything could happen to me. I could become invalid within the next few years. When you say I could become invalid, what does that mean? Um, you know, the person may get into a state where doctors have declared him unfit to work again. You don't have the strength to Maybe go by about accident. by accident. They have suffered a deformity or injured in a way that they can't work anymore. Exactly. Okay. Or even mentally, All the right. person is not okay to perform what he or she was doing. Mm. So in that state, once the person has done 12 months of contribution, within the, within the past 36 months, he or she qualifies to receive monthly pension for the rest of his or her life. That is why we have some 30-year-olds who are receiving monthly pension. So it doesn't matter the job you are doing, actually. You must join the SNES scheme. Okay. Um, so this year, we are rolling out a campaign, hopefully from April, because a lot of people in the private sector or the self-employed, the uh, celebrities and all that, mm -hmm. they have this perception that SNIT is for only employees oh, of no. formal sectors. But that is not the case. SNIT is for all of us. Right. We all have the same risk of becoming old or losing a regular job through accident or any other means. And it's surprising. That you, when you mention even celebrities, it's surprising that we know musicians, we know actors and various other people, they get out of their job for a short time and they are in serious trouble. They go in into penury and they are making public announcements to beg for support. So even if you're on, on your own, you can register with SNIT and be. make contributions yes, against you know, the day when you will not be able to work. Contingency. Okay. Exactly. That SNIT basically is a social insurance scheme mm -hmm. which covers three major contingency. Old age, invalidity, and death, should you die in employment. Now, he was explaining invalidity. I want to add that when one becomes invalid, you can't come to SNIT and ask us to pay you pension. Okay. You must be declared as permanently incapable of any work by your medical doctor. Then you come to SNIT and lodge your claim, and SNIT will put you before a medical board comprising of doctors from Kolebu Ridge and the Trust Hospital. When they certify your incapacity, then pension will be paid okay. to you for life. Great. So I want to clear that point. Great. Because Great. most people think that mm -hmm. once they become invalid, they can walk to SNIT and, but you must submit this qualifying condition mm -hmm. as well as 12 month contributions turning to your credit in the last 36 months prior to the invalidity. And that is why it is important you don't truncate your contribution. Ensure it is consistent and that you are not defaulting at any time. Because a default can deny you, of deny you of benefit when you most need it. Please don't default. But there are times that, Mr. Saki, that it is not the fault of the contributor okay. that there has been a default. Where you have an employer who is not helping the employee. Some we have heard interesting stories. He's saying I'm deducting for the SNIT, but he's not, he's not paying. paying. Alert SNIT, we have a tax force at the compliance department. Just furnish us with the name of your employer, location of the company or factory, or wherever you go to do your work. Give us the information, your name, your social security number. 
it is our duty to pursue the employer because after deducting, he's holding the money in trust for SNIT. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if they refuse to pay, it is SNIT which must pursue the employer and collect the money. On but your employees behalf. are scared. They are afraid. Well, what I said was laced with SNIT or contact us. The task force will just not go and say XYZ came to report. No. There's confidentiality. Confidentiality. Okay. We'll ask for your payroll, your attendance book, so many other things. We'll, we'll come as if we are auditing the firm. Right. And then look out for your name and other names mm. who are not being paid for. Right. And then we take it up from there. Great. So for many of you who have such complaints, this is the solution to you. Get to SNIT and make a complaint. Your identity will be protected. And the one who is trying to take you for granted and compromise your contributions and benefits will be dealt with. You spoke about, uh, Charles spoke about the voluntariness for those who are in the informal sector, professionals who are self-employed and the rest of them. But there is a compulsory aspect of the contribution. Explain that to us. The mandatory aspects are the first and second tier. Okay. So your five and a half percent and the employer's 13 percent together constitute the 18 and a half. Now, what we have found over the years is that most employers do not consolidate the allowances. So they have basic, small salary, and then huge allowances. At the end of your working life, your benefit will be based on what came in. Mm. So just on like basic. the IT system, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't contribute substantial to the scheme, your benefit will also not be substantial. And so it is worth noting that since we are educating the public, mm -hmm. they must make sure they negotiate consolidation of salary. All right. So that most of employees don't want consolidation because of tax element. But whether you consolidate the allowance or not, the allowances have already been taxed. So why don't you pay social security on them to enhance your future benefits when you retire? So if I'm an employee, I should look to ensuring that my employer, the fringe benefits, or if you call them allowances, are consolidated into my salary that is so true. that it improves my contribution Pension. and my benefit. Your benefit at the end. Okay. Be um, fringe benefits that are cash, <laughs> I mean, like vehicle, yeah. fuel, those things. Yeah, but other cash... Uh, allowances right. should be consolidated okay. because if you are giving fuel, you put it in your uh, vehicle. But that means that the employer will contribute more. Yes, so, so that is, this is what <laughs> this employers is why they sometimes avoid. do. Um, they will declare smaller basic salaries mm. because of the 13% they will have to pay for the employee. Oh, yeah. So they'll declare 2,000 cities as your basic salary, 3,000 cities as allowances. The employee may say, right, everything comes to the same kitty, so I'm okay. So we have some people who are getting maybe market premium, which may be about 40% of their basic salaries. So now you retire, and in determining your pension, that 40%, which was market premium, will not affect mm. the figure that we use to determine. Right. Because what you contribute on determines your pension. Right. It will surprise you to know that about 80% um, of contributors have told us at SNET that their salary is 2,500 cities or less. <coughs> 2,500 cities or less. It is just about 5.3% of workers in Ghana who have told us that they earn 5,000 cities or more. So if you are earning 5,000 cities or more, and you've worked for, say, 35 years, the 35 years is only going to give you a certain percentage of the 5,000 cities. So people come and say, I've worked for so long. The number of years is going to help you get a certain percentage. So 
that percentage is up to a maximum of 60%. So if you've done 35 years, you can get 60% right. of the average of your three years best annual salaries. Okay. So if you have told us that your salary is 2,000 cities on the average, over the past three years, you've been getting 2,000 and you've worked for 35 years. All that you are telling us is that when I'm due to retire, give me 60% of these 2,000 cities, because that is what you've been contributing on. Mm -hmm. And that means your pension is going to start on 1,200 cities, subject to annual increment. But the other person who worked with you, who didn't have allowances, you were getting 2,000 basic, 3,000 allowances. As allowance, his is 5,000, no allowance. When you both retire, having contributed for the same period, then you are go he is going to get 60% of the 5,000. Meaning you start on a pension of 1,000 to he is going to start on a pension of 3,000. Then people come back and say, we all were earning the same salary. Mm -hmm. We're employed at the same time. We are of the same we're age. on the same grade. Uh, we will let you know that your contributions were different. Mm -hmm. So it is important for workers to be interested in the salary that they are contributing on. That is why every quarter, every three months, SNIT sends people's contribution statements to them. Okay. So you should be interested in the statement that is sent to your email every now and then and check whether what your employer is paying for you oh, is actually what you are earning. All right. And we have situations where employers are deducting their 13% from their workers' salaries. Mm. So instead of paying 13%, they deduct, they deduct from the workers' salaries. Which is and funny. some also tell you that this place, we don't pay social security. So you have you to don't pay it on take your own. interest and get actively to check, you will not know. You will you not, not know. know. Right. Now, apart the, the, the other aspect I wanted you to talk about briefly before we go for the case that the, one of our uh, viewers sent and then to get ready to open the lines to take their questions is whilst the self-employed and yes basically the self-employed are supposed to you you seem to implore them encourage them yeah for those who are in formal employment the employer has no option no option it is law they must comply with comply if with they do not they're in trouble yeah so with the self-employed, um, if you look at the statistics at our place now, we have about 1.73 million contributors on our scheme. And um, stats out there indicates that there are about 30 million workers. Mm. So over 11 million people. I was going to people, say that was a very encouraging figure. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Um, majority of the people in the informal sector or the self-employed right. are yet to subscribe to this scheme. Mm. That is why we are trying to focus our, our attention and education more on the self-employed. We, we have been given a duty to provide pension for all. Right. So looking at the 1.7 million, it looks quite okay, but it is not. If we are able to do it and do it well, we'll have the number of people even relying on this livelihood empowerment against poverty, the LEAP program, mm -hmm. will reduce. Mm -hmm. With the SNES scheme as it is now, it has some minimum insurance in there. There's a minimum pension of 300 cities for this year. People say, wow, 300 cities, too small. But this is the truth. Most of the people who will be earning 300 cities if you determine their pension, the salaries they declared to us was probably 400 cities. Mm. So if you even work the 60% of 400 cities, that person qualifies to receive 240 cities. So SNIT actually tops up to bring the person to a 300 cities. So Great. quite a lot of people, the salaries they are getting, the, those in the private security and all that, if yeah. you talk to them, mm. you'll be surprised. Right. So if you look at the contribution database <clears throat> where about 20% or so are contributing on salaries of 500 cities or less. Mm. All these people will be put on the 300. And the other benefit that people sometimes lose sight of 
is the fact that when you retire, even if you are 90 years, SNET will continue to pay you. Right. In other words, yes. pension is for life. As long as you are alive, you will be paid pension. Right. But I want to clear uh, your question mm. about the compulsory oh, as nature yeah. of um, former employees. Right. Now, Regulation 11, 3 of our law, that is Social Security, basic, basic National Social Security Scheme Regulation, LI 1989. It provides that the penalty provided under Section 64 of the Act shall apply to self-employed person or voluntary contributor who fails to pay his contribution within a specified period. Okay. It's just that we have not been enforcing it. But going forward, plans have been put in place to enforce it. So now, if you're a voluntary contributor and you decide that I'll pay my contributions monthly or quarterly or every six months, then if the six months or quarterly uh, three months period expires without you paying, penalty will be applied. All right. But by, by, by this, um, the voluntary, con uh, sorry, the self-employed <laughs> should not be scared that if, if I don't, why should I join? Please, you still need to join. We are not going to come after you, chasing you that you've, and you've defaulted. No. If you miss a month and you say you don't want to pay for it, you so won't be, force you. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to compel you. Okay. Right. But you are paying it for your own good. So I'm doing my own thing and I've not yet made up my mind to contribute. But once I have employed or taken on one more person to work for me, then what happens? You add his name to the contribution list. So, so you are not paying. Yes. You, you've not decided. I've been doing but my own now small you have an employee. But now I have brought in one or two people. So, so now you have an employee. Mm. Even if you don't want to pay for yourself, you need to pay for that person. You need or you, you have must. to. You must. It, it is a shall. You, you must pay for that person. It, it, it is not like um, because I have not decided. When I decide for myself, I'll decide for no. Once you have taken him on, the law mandates you to pay for that person. Whilst you are thinking about joining, <laughs> keep thinking. But that person, <laughs> you don't have the right to think about registering. Will that include my house help? That person you have engaged as your house help is you're under obligation to register and pay for the person. It, it, you can't say the work relationship is not written, it is not clearly defined. I have not put him on any regular income. You have engaged the person for a service and you are paying him directly or indirectly. So you will need to get to our office, let us sit down and agree on how the payment is going to be made. It is not uh, voluntary. It is compulsory. Okay. You must. Mm. Probably for now, you say, who is going to come to your home to check? You don't know when what is going to happen. Exactly. This person may become invalid someday. It gets out there. Then she gets to know that, oh, it was my right to have enjoyed this service. Mm. We get to know and we realize that now we are coming after you with okay. uh, summons from the court. That should not happen. All right. So let's uh, get to uh, Mr. Darkon and then we will get to opening the phone lines for you to join our guests this afternoon. This is the law, it's your legal light, it's your help law. And our guests this afternoon are Emmanuel Saki, Legal Services Manager of the Trust, and Charles Akwe Gershon, uh, Acting Public Affairs Manager of the Trust. I'm talking about SNIT. Today, we are dealing with uh, time with SNIT. Now, uh, Darko says, please, can your employer pay for your SNIT contribution without paying employees actual take-home salaries? We have dealt with it already. Can your employer pay for your SNIT contribution without paying employees actual take-home salaries? Is it lawful? And if not, what should I do? Thank you. And that's from Dako. Uh, he gave us his full name, but for some reason to avoid to giving out too much. Yes, so uh, Ima, what will you say about that? Well, looking at the question, I think the employer has, can do that. The reason 
is that there are sanctions if he fails to pay their contribution. I know some organizations where employee salaries are in arrears. They negotiate and pay them as and when money drops in. However, they have not defaulted with a state contribution okay. because it comes with penalty of 3%. So to avoid piling up the penalty or paying penalty, they will prefer to pay SNIT on the 14th of the ensuing month and then negotiate installment payment of the They would rather owe the employee, employee than, than to owe SNIT. Okay. Uh, somehow, is it really owing the employee? Because they are really taking care of your future. And again, <laughs> the employee has earned that income. Mm -hmm. And so if the employer pays it, he commits no offense. Right. The income has been earned, which is what SNIT's law but The provides. education you gave earlier was that the 13% must not be a deduction yeah. from, from your basic salary. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much. Um, we are opening the phone lines now for you to join us. And uh, Mr. Darko, I hope that we assisted you sufficiently. So now the phone lines are open. You can call us and let's next have your questions. You had referred to uh, section 64, which yeah, is penalty. penalty for non-payment of contributions. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you like to take us through? Uh, um, I like I like you guys to look at it, it from your own. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for yes. yes, if people fail to pay contribution by the stipulated date, that is the fourteenth of the ensuing month, then thirteen percent penalty is charged. Okay. This, three. Sorry, three percent penalty is charged, and it continues. So it continues every month till the final date of payment of the contributions plus accrued penalty. Now, where the employer does not pay this 3% penalty and contributions, we have another option that is to proceed to court. Okay. So if you look at section 83, that is the penal provisions in the act. Um, I, I don't want to go through that to scare people so much, but you can be jailed up to a maximum of five years, and you can be fined uh, 2,000 penalty units. Right. So some, we've had cases where people were owing as little as 700 cities, and they were fined 200 penalty units. They are able to pay the fine penalty there and Penalty unit is 12 Ghana cities. Yes. So 12 times 200. Yes. Why, would, why do you want to suffer this rather than following what you have to? Okay, so yes, uh, we, have, okay. we have George. George, you are calling us uh, from where? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, George, let's hear you. After you, we have uh, Isaac calling from Suhum. Yeah, so George, let's hear you. Yeah, I want to speak my local language. Uh, I want to ask uh, how secure I, I am, because I know, sir, Obi Koye complain about my employer on Tuyas you know. But the Senate people now came back and tell the employer, say, or soon may see the year report to my mm. say, mm. Oh, no, 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 no. So, how secure I am, say, say my employer over six to eight mm. months, me on TI. And she may say, or more answer me, and what are the measures that make me a fast I will be secure because a immediate will be a no better for me, you might do. May that say, God, may that say, but make me a shower born so say. Senator Four, M. Fawichi, M. Cocantre, Wajuma, Wajuma, and I would Juma Wura say a word George and our day a complaint about Omonia or Majima, sir. Let's listen to Isaac. Yes, hello, Isaac from Sum. Yeah, please, I want to find out. I came in and then I saw that I thought that Mr. Um, Saki said if you default in your, in your contribution, it will affect your benefit. I didn't get the explanation of the default because um, I worked for some time and then my contract ended. So I came to stay home for like six months before I got another contract. I don't know if that lasted the, the contract, the second contract. Is that that not with it or for that period? Is that would you prefer that period as uh, the default? As the default? 
Okay, the, do, do you get his question? Yes. yes. Okay, but thank you. If you please keep his question. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that's from Isaac in Suhum. Hello, Frank in Hohoi. Frank, let's hear you. Okay, uh, then let's start with uh, Isaac uh, before we get to uh, George, the, who has issues with uh, whistleblower protection from victimization. Yes, um, you need 180 months contribution to qualify for pension, which is the equivalent of 15 years, and that gives you the minimum pension right of 37.5%. Okay. Every additional year of contribution will earn you 1.125% of pension rights, up to a maximum of 60%, as my colleague explained earlier. And therefore, if you default more without paying, obviously, if you can't make the 180 months, you won't earn pension. Okay. And so it's cumulative. Right. If you stop paying for a while, it will affect your pension rights. That's why it's important not to default. And if you discover maybe you have moved on from one employment to the next, ensure that it continues. Even if it is not a permanent employment, yeah. it's uh, something you are doing just for a month. Yeah. You are still entitled Temporary. to your SNIP yes. payments, it's right? It's yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let me take some more questions. Bukhari from Tumu. Hello, Bukhari. Let's hear you. Yeah. Good afternoon, Captain. Afternoon. Go ahead. Yes. I... I, I, I took uh, this little loan when I was a student. But I started to pay, so I paid about 100 CD. Later on, I used my contribution to clear, including the 100 CD. So now my problem, how do I receive the 100 CD that I've already paid? All right, thank you. Uh, Stephen from Taifa. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, my okay. question is, um, okay. I want them to give us some um, uh, a brief uh, on the reduced pension uh, because I know that uh, they said when you work for 180 days, 80 months, 180 months, you can apply for reduced pension. So they should okay. highlight on that. As well. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hold on for me. Uh, let's deal with Bukhari first, the guy who took a student, uh, who used his snake to defray his st student loan. Yeah, it is within his right to do so. Mm -hmm. But he said he paid Henry. I did so. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said he yeah. paid 100 CDs cash. Mm -hmm. Is that it? I suppose that's what I hear. Yeah. yeah, so the 100 CDs will be deducted from the loan, and the remainder will, uh, will use the contribution to defray. Okay. So I'm sure that is what was done, because okay. the 100 CDs paid will go to his credit. Yeah. And so the outstanding is what will use his contribution to defray. But, but we always advise people not to be using their contributions because the number of months you've contributed mm -hmm. will inform mm -hmm. the percentage That's right. of the best salaries yeah. if you take. That's right. So you realize if you use your present contributions may not be so big, mm -hmm. so you end up losing so many months. Mm -hmm. So if it is possible for you to pay, right. please go ahead and pay. Right. And the judge's case, sometimes what employers do, because you have gone to him before to complain about your social security, they assume that it is you and they come forcefully at you that snitch people came to say this. So if you realize the environment is the work environment is not too receptive of some of these challenges, please don't go and complain to your employer. That's come right. straight to us. Because when you do so, you are the primary suspect exactly. so when SNIT comes. Very well. So Sometimes it could even be that no report has gone to SNIT, but SNIT is doing routine, routine inspections. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Because we come to various offices every now and then. All right. Um, Steve uh, from Taifa, Stephen, he wants education on reduced pension. So for, for SNIT reduced pension, you need to be 55 years. So once you have contributed for the minimum 180 months, whether self-employed or an employee, and you feel you cannot work again or you don't want to work again, you have the right to apply and receive pension. But we are expecting you to have showed up at age 60. Now you are coming earlier than that. So if your pension should have been 10,000 cities a month, because you've come a year earlier, you're going to start on about 9,000 cities. But by the following year, when we do what we call the indexation, the increase, your pension is going to be brought up by the percentage that everybody is receiving for that year. All right. So 
you have the right to reduce pension mm. once you have done 180 months. But if you've not done 180 months, you wouldn't get reduced pension. You'll get a refund of your contribution plus interest. We'll take our very last uh, caller from Obwase. Hello, Richard. Uh, hello, Samson. Hi, go ahead. Okay. So I'm asking that um, I work with a media company for almost two years now. There are a recommend that says that this is for the money. In such a circumstance, how am I able to calculate or get my, uh, uh, my SNIT payment? And the company is also not doing, they are not paying anything. How do I get them to pay? Thank Saki, you. did you understand his question? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Did you yes, answer his question? He worked two years with a media company, right. which refused to pay his contribution. That's right. And then he's left. I'll take one more call. Just hold on. Yes. He's uh -huh. left. Right. He must just provide evidence to us that he worked in that company. Okay. Maybe employment letter or something. Mm. We will go after the employers All right. and ensure that the contribution for him is paid okay. and credited to his account. That's simple. And I was taking a very final one from uh, uh, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello. Yes, Martin, please go ahead. Yes, my question is, I want to find out if I work... Hello. Martin, go ahead. Yes, what I'm asking is, if, if I work for 12 years in a particular company, then I stop and go to school for about four years. Because I was in school and I was not working, no income, there was no snake contribution on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Then after schooling, I come back and I gain employment and I'm paying snake. That gap there, how do we treat it? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, uh, it will stay as a gap because if you are allowed to pay back, you'll be buying back your pension right. You know, I've said earlier on that when you contribute, you are accruing pension right. 15 years gives you 37.5%. Every additional year, 1.125. So the four years you didn't pay, you've lost that pension right. Mm. Except, of course, you were on steady leave with pay. Okay. That one, your employer will have to pay. That's right. But if it is without pay, then you lose that pension right, and you continue from where you left. Right. Uh, Charles? Uh, from where uh, you gotten the new job. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Charles, uh, before we go, we have uh, just a, a bit of time to go. What would you like to generally tell people about, you know, uh, their pensions, their SNET contributions? All right. Great. As... A worker. Uh, it seems uh, discussion this afternoon we'll be using employee, employee. That's Please, right. if you are self employed, you are part of it. Yeah, so okay. you don't have to worry about salary. You will declare what you think you can conveniently pay and we'll let you know how much that translates into by way of salary to be able to know what you earn when you retire. I want us to be interested in our contributions today. What you contribute will determine what you will receive when you retire. Right. And when we talk about retirement within the pension industry, it is not just 60, but it is also the situation where you have been declared unfit to work again. What you earlier said, invalid. Invalid. Mm. So I will encourage all of us, let's not see 60 years as a far off. <laughs> and let's also not allow employers to pay on very meager salaries because it is your pension is a reflection of the salaries you are earning so if you want to know how your pension is going to be like look at your salaries today mm. forget about the allowances and our other colleagues who find themselves in certain sectors who get a market premium please look at it again that 40 percent market premium will not affect your pension when you retire, you will lose that allowance and you only get a percentage of your basic. I think that's very instructive. There are many people who are in this situation and perhaps have not thought of the effect in future. Please take note of that. So, and we need to also not overly 
rely on the pension system. The pension system is very good, right. but the kind of life you want to re live when you retire, that is what you should be insuring today. Yeah. Uh, my director will always use an example that you, you have a Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. and you come to us at SNET that this is, or you go to the insurance company and say, I have a TICO. <laughs> and you go and insure the TICO. Mm -hmm. You get involved in an accident. The insurance firm replaces your TICO and say, no, 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 I was driving a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> you insured a TICO vehicle. Yeah. So I will advise that insure the right salary. Because when you retire and we are replacing part of your salary, we'll replace what you declared to us and not what you think you have out there. That's so I'll right. plead all, with all of us, yeah. please be interested. Those who have not updated their records with SNET, we didn't talk so much about the survivor's benefit. We have yeah. instances where people pass on, they use their siblings as their beneficiary. They went on to get married, They've ha they have children, their children are old, and now we, you realize you are giving your benefit so to the we wrong can, people. We so can, we can consider structuring uh, what outstanding matters need to be canvassed uh, to make things complete. And perhaps uh, if you could make the time, we could have you back. Very but, well. uh, Emmanuel Saki, what will you say? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, mm. but in a different way. All right. Let me put it this way. A lot of people have this misconception that Snet, you contribute, they don't know what we do with your money. The contingencies are old age, invalidity, and death. Nobody knows the future. That's right. So let's contribute. Allow SNET to manage it for you because it's a defined benefit scheme. That's right. You know your benefit right from the day you join the scheme. That's right. Again, I want my colleague lawyers and others, when spouses and children are not nominated, I'm taking it from where he left off, they can apply to court for the spouse and children to be joined because the social security benefits is meant for your dependents. And so if you are not there, the uh, bread winner, you lose your life. Your dependents should not suffer because you are not alive. Mm. And so you must update your nominations regularly to include your spouse and children, all those who depend on your income. You are saying if I did not include my spouse and children, yes, yeah, such as 73 for a court to do so. Yes, you yeah. can apply to mm. vary that Very section 73.3 of the Act. What does it say? It says that where a disease member failed to nominate a surviving spouse and children as beneficiaries, the spouse and children may apply to the court for a variation of the nomination to include them. All right. Again, Thank where so there are much. minors. Uh, time has run out of us. Uh, my guests have been Emmanuel Saki, Legal Services Manager, Snate, and Charles Akwe Geshon, uh, Acting Public Affairs Manager of Snate. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini. This has been the law. It's your legal light. It's your health law. And as always, send us your issues to the email address, samson.ladi. There's no P in the Samson. Samson.ladi. Ladi is L-A-R-D-Y at myjoyonline.com and we shall deal with your issues. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so very much. <laughs>